Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Learning disorders, sometimes called learning disabilities, show up as marked difficulties in the acquisition and use of listening, speaking, reading, and other abilities. They affect the brain's ability to receive, process, store, respond to, and communicate information. Experts say learning disorders are not caused by economic constraints or cultural differences, nor are they a result of lack of exposure to education. Are learning disorders the same as intellectual disabilities or what was known as mental retardation in the past? How does one identify a learning disorder? Let's find out all about them today with Dr. Mutunrayo Uyelu Huno, a psychiatrist at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital in Diaraba. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, learning disorders, what causes them? Um, learning disorders are caused by a myriad of factors, um, mostly not identified. But it's been found out that in most people with learning disorders, there's a genetic basis to it. That is, somebody in the family, most probably a first-degree relative, has had it. Um, the first-degree relative may even have it in minor at minor levels. When you say first degree relative, you're talking about father or mother? Father or mother. Okay. But it could also occur in second degree relatives as well. Um, other causes are some minor um, changes in the brain, especially in the temporal area of the brain. And um, for example, for the mathematics disorder, we have some abnormalities in part of the cerebellum have also been found. And um, some other Neurological conditions or medical conditions have also been implicated, but the, um, the basis for their causing them has not really been um, well expounded on. You mentioned uh, a mathematical disorder. Yes. That means that there are other disorders. Yes. Roughly, what are the disorders? Um, learning disorders comprise about three major categories. Um, we have the specific reading disorders, also known as dyslexia. Um, there is the um, disorder of written expression, which is also known as dysgraphia. And then there is the mathematics disorder of specific arithmetic skills. Okay. Can you give us a sense of some of the specific symptoms that accompany these disorders? Okay. Um, I would like to start by saying that for the specific, um, the learning disorders generally occur in children and adolescents. And that's the first time they are noticed, especially when um, they first start school, in school age children. And um, they are not in keeping with the child's level of intellectual quotient. That's the IQ. These children are intelligent. And some of them actually have a high IQ. But they have specific disabilities or disorders in some of these areas. Um, for example, for the reading disorders, they find it difficult connecting the sound with the word. And so it's difficult for them to pronounce words. It may be difficult for them even to understand whatever they read. These are children who, when you call them, they find it difficult to read in class. They find it difficult and even juxtapose some words with others. For example, um, they want to say B. They could say D. So that happens. Then for the... Um, Disorder of written expression, which is also known as dysgraphia, they also find um, problems with um, punctuation, they have difficulties spelling, they have difficulties writing, they have, usually have poor handwriting okay, as well. Okay, so the difficulty is not just not knowing what to write, but actually not being able to able write to well. Able to write well. Okay. Yes, and then for the mathematics disorder, these children have um, difficulties with basic arithmetic um, symbols. They, they may not be able to identify what an addition sign is, what a subtraction sign is. They find it difficult transcribing um, word problems into mathematical expression. And they find it difficult even to arrange logically a mathematical problem to solve. So for each one of them, these are some of the um, um, features that one could see. Well, one can understand that uh, a child may have a difficulty transcribing a word problem to, you know, mathematics, but not being able to identify a plus sign or a minus sign 
that's also a problem for some of them. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I didn't come across any statistics for learning disorders. Is there a reason for this? Um, At least no statistics in this in country. In this country. Even in developed parts of the world, the statistics are not... Um, 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 there's a um, difficulty getting the statistics. But I know that in the United States of Amer America, 4% um, has been given for dyslexia. It occurs in about... Um, uh, at a percentage of 4% in, in children, and um, the arithmetic skills disorder, it's not well known, but some figures have shown 1% um, percent okay, there so about for them. Less prevalent yes. than the reading and writing disorders. Yes. But in Nigeria, well, I have, I'm not aware of any statistics yet. Do you think, is, is there a reason for this uh, lack of statistics? The I cannot say maybe there's a particular reason, but I could just expound on some reasons that I think may be responsible. Um, these are not things that have come to public awareness. Um, they are not things that uh, are paid attention to. And um, secondly, we have more problems we are dealing with, so to say. Um, malaria. malaria, HIV, AIDS, diarrhea disease. These are ravaging um, um, families and killing children in thousands. And um, for even under mental health, we still have some more um, disorders that are taking up people's um, attention. We have the autism spectrum disorders, the hyperactivity disorders. So learning disorders have not really been focused on, and that is what I can can say about that. So Would you say learning, or learning disorders have uh, levels of, uh, how do I put it, levels of expression in different people? Can it sometimes be mild, sometimes uh, yes, yes. major in yes, different people? Yes, it could people? be mild, it could be moderate in severity, and it could be severe as well. Okay, so is, is there a possibility that a child could have a learning disorder and he could live throughout life and it would go unnoticed, since he's uh, pretty intelligent. Yes, yes, that is very, very possible. For instance, I'd like to use the um, mathematics disorder as an example. Um, a child who has difficulty with mathematics, um, really in, in other parts of the world, this would have come to notice because um, one of the criteria for making a diagnosis is that it is significant enough to affect the child's life, daily activities. So it should come to the notice of either the parents or the teachers if attention is being paid to this child. But it's possible if the child doesn't like mathematics, the child could opt out, especially when the child gets to a more senior class in school. And so it could be unnoticed. The child is just in an arts class or decides to go into the social sciences. And so the child is able to avoid uh, mathematics the trouble altogether. spot, so yes. to speak. Yes. Okay. Um, do you prescribe any uh, precautions for the pregnancy stage or before pregnancy stage? Are there things anybody can do to probably lessen the um, occurrence of the incidence of learning disorders? Um, there aren't um, um, things that have been identified, although in some quarters, um, things like maybe alcohol exposure in pregnancy have been suggested to be risk factors, but that is also a risk factor for mental retardation. Um, lead poisoning has also been identified by some people, although this has not also been um, um, closely um, um, correlated with learning disorders. But um, what we've seen is that some chromosomes and that's the unit of inheritance, have been found to um, contain the locus of the genes that express for some of these learning disorders. What's the locus of a gene? As, well, that's the spot where the gene is on um, the chromosome. That's okay. the locus. Okay. And chromosome 6 has been found to be um, implicated, at least widely, in um, learning disorders, especially the reading type. Okay, so we can say that, uh, in effect, something could actually go wrong during the pregnancy that might be responsible for a learning disorder. Um, like I said before, 
these are risk factors. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about the genes, that means something that is inherited. And you know, I alluded genetic causes to be one of the major yes, causes of um, learning disorders, apart from some minor brain abnormalities that, were, that have also been um, identified. Okay. We are presented with a child now yes. who has already been identified to have a learning disorder. Is there a way to treat this thing? The treatment of learning disorders generally, um, let me say, could be multifactorial. And um, we see it in uh, multidimensionally, although the main treatment option is remediation. And that is like a one-on-one -on -one um, studying for the child, identifying the child's problem first. The key is to assess, to make a diagnosis, and then to now identify which of these learning disorders the child actually has. Uh, but mind you, the child could come to the attention of the child um, expert because the child has other associated problems. Uh -huh. And these are the problems we call the comorbidities. That means they rarely occur alone. In fact, in child mental health, we usually say that problems occurring together are the rule and not the exception. So you see a child, the child is already depressed. That means the child, the child may present even with depression or anxiety. And then you're able to now work out what the primary problem is. But the treatment option itself for learning disorders are remediation, education remediation. Those are the, and that is the primary treatment. But because it could co-occur with other conditions, you have to also manage the other conditions. Okay, so you've talked about um, the child having a one-on-one -on -one tutorship, yes. so to speak. Is there a possibility that the child may need a different approach to learning, not Absolutely. just the one-on-one -on -one thing, Absolutely. but like you teach him differently from other normal children. Yes, yes. Um, for I would use um, the example of the reading disorder first. The child may need, um, during the one-on-one -on -one teaching, how a teacher who is sounding, how to move from the, phonolo the phonological aspect to recognizing words because it is sounding from sounding to recognizing. to recognizing alphabets and then to be able to pull down words together that this is what this word means and then to understand the context in which the word is, is appearing. Then for um, the disorder of written expression or spelling disorder, um, it's been said that um, helps such as maybe a spell checker and most of our the phones, you have on your phone, on your phones, on your laptops, on your tablets, you have some of those. So perhaps these are things that came up because of um, um, identification of people with some of these disorders okay. and places where these um, gadgets are produced. So tell us, um, how normal a life can a sufferer live? Let's take the kind of person whose disorder is quite marked. Okay. Can this person live a normal life? It's possible for the person to live a normal life. Um, you mean treated or untreated? Well, let's take it both ways. Okay. Untreated, um, the person could live a normal life. Although um, the problem is with the sequelae, what arises as a result of the problem that a person has. For example, this is a child or an adolescent. Um, knows or recognizes that he or she has problems with reading. He's ashamed, he's even afraid to be called out in class. For instance, I'm just going to use a generic name, John. John, can you read this out aloud in class? He's scared. The next minute he wants to avoid school. Mm. He may become a trant as a, a result of that. You know, he drops out of school. What are his chances? He drops out, he's not able to meet up with his peers. He becomes depressed. He could even move on to abusing substances. And you know, that age is when children or an adolescent experiment a lot. And some of them even try to manage their problems by using substances of abuse. And so these are some of the things that could impinge on the uh, person's um, ability to, to live, live a normal, a normal life. life. So you have an adult, a young adult who is disgruntled with life. He's frustrated and he's not just happy. 
and he sees his peers, they are doing better, he's not able to do better because he, he didn't have the quality of education that he would have had if someone had um, identified this problem earlier. But if treated, treated, yes, they could live a fairly normal life. We've had um, um, popular people who have come out to say they had dyslexia as children and you know they were able to pull through. We're coming back. We have to take a break right now. Okay. We're going on a break. We'll be back shortly. And then your questions, your reactions right after now. <laughs> 